<laughs> well, welcome back um, to the great studio tidy up. And I think it is fair enough to say that we have well and truly hit the gets worse before it gets better point of this job. Um, I've pulled everything out from shelves and drawers and cupboards and now I can't move. Um, so first of all, I think I'm going to go across to my mum's and pick up the bit of furniture that she has offered to give me to help sort out all the little things in this space. So off we go. So very excitingly, I have been offered an old shop fitting. Um, you can see my, my mum's maybe as much of a hoarder as I am. Um, so when my mum had an antique shop, she had this old shop fitting, which she used to keep all of the broken bits of jewellery and clasps and all of that kind of thing in. And now she doesn't do that anymore. Um, my brother, who has the antique shop, doesn't want that anymore because he doesn't really sell jewellery. So I have been offered it for my studio. Right, it's really the most brilliant thing. It's got these glass doors and then lots and lots of trays. And I have this idea that I can keep all of my pressed flowers and things in them. So this is going to come home with us and go into my studio. Now I'm back in the studio and I thought I would show you some of the other pieces of furniture that I have down here. For me, it's really important that unless I absolutely have to buy new, I repurpose something else. So my studio is very much a kind of a mix of things that have been acquired, often at salvage yards, sometimes in vintage shops, um, and put together um, to make the studio. And in some ways that has been fantastic because I've been able to just move things around as and when things have changed. Um, in other things, it, it does mean, you know, I have office wheelie chairs that came from a friend, which are not beautiful. Um, anyway, Let's have a look at what I have. Right, this is a pine cupboard that I bought in 1997 when I was expecting Zoe, my oldest daughter, and it became her wardrobe for a number of years. It was originally painted white and I stripped it. Now I don't do that because I'm much more aware of all of the nasties that can be in paint. But, so it's now back to a nice pine. Um, and if we open this, you can see in the press, it has some drawers. And this is the kind of drawer that I really like because you can take it right out and then I can go and work with it. Um, put it back in there. Okay. Um, <laughs> you can see the stickers. I'm, I'm a great one for leaving... Um, the history of an item somewhere. So this has got underwear, uh, tops and t-shirts, trousers in it. And on this side, you know, obviously there's a hanging rack, um, which used to be for all the clothes. But I've put in a couple of shelves. And this press there's some bits of um, lace and so on. So that is my supplies cupboard. Squeak, squeak. And because it's nice and short, um, made for going into low ceilinged um, rooms, possibly maid's room, 
and there is space to put my baskets on the top. I love old baskets. I am a bit of uh, a collector of old baskets, you know. People see me coming when they have a basket. So I have things like, this is the indigo dyed bits, which I am working on half finished things. Um, and then there's some bits and bobs like bull shawls that have come my way that I'm kind of working out what I can do. And I think I need to become a better natural dyer before I tackle any of those. So moving on into the middle, here is, oh, I just love it. It is an old workbench. That it has no practical use apart from the fact that I think it gives the studio its air of workmanship. It is battered about. There are bits of paint on it. There's a vice at the end there. I got it from Salvation Glasgow. It's, it's just good and solid and honest, and I love it. And then above that, Ewan is going to build me shelves out of scaffolding boards. And I'm just about to have to tiptoe over the scaffolding boards, which are on the ground here, uh, drying out to show you my other cupboard. Um, here I am, very haphazardly, balancing on these boards. This is a thing which used to be used for proving bread rolls. And again, each of these drawers comes out, I can take it onto a table. Um, this is not sorted yet at all. Um, but I have all of these drawers. I love this detailing. Um, you'll see later I love this kind of detailing. And then, if I just get these back in, I can just close it all off. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be using this for at the moment, whether I use it for the bigger pieces of um, pressed flowers that I'm making for printing, or whether it becomes the space where I keep all of the finished prints in it. I suspect is what's going to be happening because it is such lovely big flat draws. I'm going to balance back over these and uh, and switch off. Right, and here in the corner, you can see um, a thing that's shelves and drawers, and I keep I'm keeping all of the kind of bits of quilted fabric in there, um, odds and ends. Now, this was my childhood wardrobe, or part of it, rather. Um, when I was seven, we moved into a rather grand house um, that was very dilapidated, and bought lots of the furniture, and um, I had this amazing Edwardian wardrobe in my bedroom. And then when I left home, I took it with me. Um, it was enormous, it was ridiculous. And then when we moved several times, it began to fall to bits because it had to be taken to bits every time um, that we moved house and it didn't really like it. So by the time we moved here, it was, it was very much in bits. And part of it became the headboard for our bed and the mirror became the mirror in the dressing room and this came down here and it has been in my studio basically as a very sentimental uh, thing of shelves because it, it's not that practical that drawer is so difficult to get out and i'm keeping at the moment lots of um, things like old quilts and bits of fabric that i'm going to reuse and right along the other side of the room, um, you can see we have a chemistry bench, which we bought um, from a salvage yard, and it is absolutely brilliant because you can get it wet and it doesn't warp. So that has also been brilliant, but I am going to make a curtain to go right the way along there because I don't like that mess anymore. So out of everything that I'm doing here, the one thing that I think may disapprove of is that I am planning to paint this table. I got this table which was an old art school table um, in an art department of a secondary school and it's got lots of lovely patina of 
paint and glue and staples and graffiti and um, chewing gum on it. And I have had it like this for several years. But now I'm just wanting it to be plain so that it is just me doing things with it. it it's kind of like it's a nice background to me. So I am going today to sand it lightly because actually I've decided that a halfway house would be to keep the texture of the paint. Um, so I'm going to sand it lightly and prime it today and paint it tomorrow. Um, and fingers crossed that I'll like it when it's finished because I do really love it like this. Um, but it's not working for what I need it to be, which is like a plain background. Right, the table is now finished. soft dark green that's got quite a yellowish undertone very very happy with that it is a faro and ball paint it is called banca b-a-n-c-h-a and is number 298 and because faro and ball paints got a long long way i have so much paint left um, so i've painted this little ikea kick stool that we have here is to put my camera apparatus thing on here. This is where my phone goes here and it, it then looks down the way if I'm doing kind of um, things with my hands so that people can actually see that. So I need to kind of properly get this all strapped on here but that is looking promising. I wanted it, I want it all to be the same colour so that if by accident any of the legs get into shot you can't really see them. I'm going to be giving it my first chance of going through this whole setup uh, tomorrow because I am doing a live workshop on Zoom in aid of the International Red Cross and we're going to be making decorative hearts out of plant material and 100% of the proceeds of that go to the Red Cross. It's on Friday the 8th at 11 o'clock UK time. Um, if you want to join up and you've seen this before 10 o'clock, then I um, put it on and I will send you all the details and the link. If you've missed it and you wanted to see it, I'm going to be putting up a recording um, of the whole thing. And again, 100% of the proceeds will be going to the International Red Cross. So if that sounds like something that you would like to do and you're seeing this after the um, 8th of December 2023, the link will be in the comments here. Um, so now I'm going to get on with finishing the tidying up down here and I will see you next week. Have a lovely weekend.